If you are flying at hypersonic speed, the familiar aerodynamics governing the flight of planes doesn't apply straight away. Lift is generated by a different mechanism. Control requires special aerodynamic surfaces. The flow itself doesn't behave as you would expect. These are crucial differences that require the unmistakable design of hypersonic cruise missiles to make everything work properly. I'm The Crow, welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. The lift of an airfoil at subsonic or transonic speed is generated by the fact that the flow speed above the airfoil is higher than below, hence the pressure above the airfoil is smaller than the pressure below and the wing is sucked upward, producing lift. This starts to change at hypersonic speed and surprisingly, the lift generation mechanism is even easier than that. At hypersonic speed, the so-called Newtonian hypothesis is a very good approximation. Newton actually believed that the source of aerodynamic forces was due to particles of fluid hitting a body and transferring the momentum perpendicular to the surface to the body. In practice, every particle was supposed to bump into a body and the total effect of all combined bumps was the aerodynamic force as if it was a sort of horizontal rain. At slow speed, this is not true, but surprisingly, at hypersonic speed, this is a very good approximation. The stream of particle impacts the portion of the body facing the flow, and we may assume that the rest of the body is in a sort of shadow and the pressure is near zero. The efficiency in producing lift is characterized by the use of a lift coefficient. At low speeds, the lift coefficient depends only from the angle of attack of the body. But at high supersonic and hypersonic speed, it depends also from the Mach number, and it tends to become smaller for the same angle of attack. If we consider the contribution of the lower and upper surfaces to the lift coefficient of the whole body, we can see that the lower surface dominates at hypersonic speed, which is actually in good agreement with the Newtonian hypothesis. You can immediately see that, if this is the case, a flat body works very well in generating the lift that may be needed, with no need of wings, with classic airfoil. The total lift being generated depends obviously from the speed and the density of the air the weapon is traveling into, but the efficiency in generating lift depends roughly from the square of the sine of the angle between the flow and the local surface. But this is not the only element in play. There is also a pressure coefficient that measures how efficient is the fluid in applying pressure in a given point at a specific speed. It is high, and the pressure is high, where the fluid is low, like right after the bow shock and near the nose, and it decreases quickly while the fluid accelerates towards the back of the vehicle. This needs to be taken into consideration to design a missile that is stable in pitch. Obviously, more stubby vehicles like uh, hypersonic glider vehicles or space vehicles are less influenced by this problem, even if NASA actually got close to losing the first space shuttle during the re-entry for a similar problem. So, is there a way to understand why this simplified lift generation mechanism happens at hypersonic speed, but not at lower speed? To explain this intuitively, we can use an analogy. If someone is actually lobbing a pebble at you, the pebble is relatively slow, and you have the time to react and get out of the way, hopefully. If someone is firing a bullet at you, it is so fast that you can't react. You are hit and thrown on the ground because all the bullet momentum has been dissipated inside you. 
No, sorry, this is creepy. This is really creepy. Who did write this? Me. Oh, suppose it's okay then. At hypersonic speed, the lumps of air are so fast that they go through the bow shock and impact the surface without changing direction too much. They are too fast for the rest of the aerodynamic field to exert any large influence on them, so they don't move in the relatively complex way, which is typical of the low speeds, where all the lumps of air have the time to heavily affect each other. Heavily affect each other. While the lift generation theory is simplified, at hypersonic speed do exist what is called the hypersonic directional stability problem. Now, this is really hard to explain without equations, because the equations show a coefficient that becomes zero when Mach increases and stays zero if the Newtonian hypothesis is true. However, I try anyway. I am sure that many of you know that the stability of planes is assured by the tail aerodynamic surfaces. For example, the stability in Yo is assured by the vertical empennage. How this happens? Well, supposed to give a little bump to the plane such that it goes to starboard a bit. The flow on the vertical fin which moves with the whole plane changes. The angle of attack increases and with the angle of attack the fin starts generating lift. Since the fin is vertical the lift is directed sideways in a way that produces a torque that puts the plane straight. At hypersonic speed we already know that the lift coefficient that measures how good is anything in a flow at generating lift decreases with the Mach number. So a small deviation will change the flow on the vertical fin, but the later lift produced will be very, very small. A small force might easily end up not being enough to put the plane straight. At that speed, the deviation may, though, be enough to create other issues like aerodynamic shadows on the horizontal tail, or parts of the plane actually intersecting the bow shock, which is as hot as a blowtorch and can damage the plane structure. This is the reason why hypersonic planes, missiles, but also space rockets often have fins with a triangular section. This generates more drag, but also generates a lateral lift. As long as the flow is parallel to the axis of symmetry, the lateral lift is the same on both sides. They balance each other. When the fin deviates, it, well, it is already producing a lift, which is high enough to set the plane straight again. For example, the vertical tail of the X-15 is actually a massive wedge. If you ever ask yourself why, well, this is the reason. The design of a hypersonic missile is a sort of minefield where the usual concepts of lower speed flow dynamics may be subverted and all sorts of these strange and counterintuitive situations like the one just described for the vertical fin may happen. So there would be plenty of other considerations to do but I think that for today I have overheated your brain enough. So if you like this video, you might also like these ones here on the side, please subscribe, hit the bell and consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thank you very much for watching, goodbye.